Hey guys, I decided to join in on the fun and review Happy Gilmore with the Philip DeFranco Movie Club. Yay! Yeah, I have a VHS. I also have Netflix, but we decided to watch it on VHS instead because apparently it's easier than, you know, streaming Netflix. <laughs> what? And no, this is not Remains from the 90s. Uh, we bought this last week. So, fun fact, Matt Cricket had plastic surgery on his nose when he was 13. The reason Matt had plastic surgery was this movie. Him and his little brother watched this movie. They got really excited about golf. They went outside to play with some golf clubs. He handed his little six-year-old brother a golf club. He said, don't swing. I'm in your line of fire. He swung anyway, knocked Matt's nose into his cheek. Matt had to have plastic surgery at the young age of 13. Oh, my eyes tearing up. It's because I was just touched so much by Happy Gilmore. So when this movie came out, I was eight years old, and when I watched it, I think I was nine or ten, and I, I vaguely remember my mother covering my ears for a lot of it, so there was a lot of things in this movie that I just had no memory of. And I want to just sum up some observations slash things I liked about Happy Gilmore. Okay, so I really enjoyed Bob Barker beating up Happy. It came out of nowhere. It just kept going and going and going. I think the shock value of that a little bit was what made it funny. Really at its basic level, Happy Gilmore is a complete satire. And a lot of people would argue with me it's not a very deep satire, but you know, it, it still does have those classic satire elements. Like, it criticizes class systems, it criticizes power structures. For instance, the only reason they kept Happy in the game was because of ratings. The only way he could make more money was if he got a product endorsement deal with Subway. You know, and then he turned the golf system on its head and he was kind of a foil to the golf snobs like Shooter. It kind of had those classic satire elements. I mean, this happens all the time in movies, but I love movies when the average Joe gets the smoking hot babe in the end. I mean, good for him. Get it, Adam Sandler. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people would agree with me, but I thought the slapstick was the most well-timed comedic element in the film. A lot of comedy writers say comedy comes in threes and, you know, stick to that kind of formula. In one of the beginning scenes when he's, he made the bet with the construction workers to hit the ball. He does it once. It's really funny when it's flying through the air and then it hits the guy's house. Twice, it hits the guy coming out of the house, getting mad about first said ball. And then number three, you, that's kind of the punchline where a random lady comes out of the attic window and it hits her too. It all hits the same house and it's just it's really well timed and I felt that a lot of the slapstick was really spot on in this movie. I really loved the Carl Weathers vision near the end with playing the piano in heaven and he had his hand back. It was unexpected, it was random. I also loved it, and this is just me, because I loved Carl Weathers' voice. I thought he had that really lovely like 1930s vibrato and he was cute. <laughs> I liked it. I'm gonna watch it again sometime soon, so thank you Phil Franco for suggesting we watch this. Grab your yamaka, oh bitch, find a car. Blah 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 blah.